Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. One of the most frequently heard claims about what's happening in Ukraine is that the Russian government is more involved than it admits. To some observers, the armed men operating in parts of eastern Ukraine look a lot like Russian special forces units on the scene to stir up unrest. The New York Times seemed to finally nail this story down in a big front page scoop on April 20th at least until they quietly walked it back a few days later. The piece relied on photographic evidence gathered by Ukrainian officials and shared with the U.S. government, which then shared it with the Times. The photos seemed to show armed men in Russia who were also photographed in Ukraine. The photos, the Times oddly noted, had been endorsed by the Obama administration. Then came the April 23rd edition of the paper with a pretty telling headline. Now, we read, people aren't sure the photos show what they thought they showed. And what was perhaps the strongest piece of evidence, photos showing a group of what appear to be special forces in Russia and then in Ukraine, may be a total washout, since the person who took the photo says it's been mislabeled. The New York Times being the New York Times, though, they're not exactly correcting their reporting. As the paper puts it, the dispute over the group photograph cast a cloud over one particularly vivid and highly publicized piece of evidence. Well, yes, publicized by you. The paper's public editor weighed in, too, saying the Times rushed the story ahead of the facts. Seems like we've heard that one before. NBC's Meet the Press has made a habit of complaining that world leaders don't always do what Barack Obama tells them to. The show reprised that lament on April 20th and managed to make it more offensive. Here's David Brooks. Obama, whether deservedly or not, does have a, I'll say it crudely, but a manhood problem in the Middle East. Is he tough enough to stand up to somebody like Assad, somebody like Putin? I think a lot of the rap is unfair, but certainly in the Middle East, there's an assumption he's not tough enough. Besides suggesting that I'll put it crudely might join I'm not a racist but as the point in a conversation when the speaker might consider stopping, there's a serious point to be made about the implicit message here that Obama doesn't use or threaten military force often enough. Obama's record should speak for itself. A massive surge of U.S. troops in Afghanistan to escalate that war. NATO strikes in Libya, and continued drone attacks in several countries. In fact, the big news that morning was a new round of attacks in Yemen. But so ingrained among elites is the idea that Obama isn't tough enough that the only response on Meet the Press was NBC reporter Chuck Todd saying something about how Obama's failure to be an alpha dog is a problem for White House insiders. Finally, news of a new round of military attacks in Yemen, some of which were probably U.S. drone strikes, made some headlines. And, as is often the case, U.S. media were able to find someone to say that U.S. weapons are too precise to kill innocent civilians. This time it was CNN hearing from former U.S. ambassador to Iraq, Christopher Hill. I have seen a number of these strikes, and uh, it is amazing how accurate and how well targeted they're, they're, they are. I mean, the idea that innocents are, are, are being killed, it's really not the case. They're going right after some real bad guys, and uh, you know, they, they've done a very good job. The problem is that even the earliest reporting from the Yemeni government admitted that three civilians were killed in the first strike, which was explained away by CNN's Pentagon correspondent, Barbara Starr. Well, it looks like three civilians were killed and that is always a big problem for the United States because the Yemen, government of Yemen is very sensitive to these drone strikes. It is a big problem when a government kills innocent civilians in a war it won't acknowledge. The Yemeni government might indeed be sensitive to this. U.S. media could stand to be more sensitive as well. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.